something pretty cool today, a real-time narrative controlled world model. Yeah, Pixverse have released a real-time video model that you can control in, I'm not gonna say real-time, but you know, pretty close to it. Now I do have to say, yes, it is a little janky, but it's also a ton of fun. And more importantly, I think it really signals some big changes that are on the way for AI video. Plus, Black Forest Labs have released Flux 2 Klein, so uh, grab your breadcrumbs, Gretel, we're gonna go check it out. We've also got some quick hit updates from Runway, Vio, and a, kind of a cool open source AI super zoom. Kicking off, Pixverse have released a real-time world video generation model. And if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I have been keeping an eye on the world model space. That goes for everything from Google's well unreleased Genie 3. There was a new one recently from Tencent that we looked at a little while ago. There's another one called Moon Lake that I've been keeping an eye on. And there is, of course, World Labs Marble, which actually I've covered pretty extensively on the channel in the past. So there are a number of different approaches to world models, but what they have in common is that they're generating video frame by frame with you know varying levels of consistency to the world state and allow for some level of exploration within that environment. So Pixverse's R1 model basically falls under the category of real-time video generation uh, that you can prompt and you know the video will continuously run and begin to adapt to your prompts. So you know that thing where people are predicting that you can change the movie as you're watching it. Uh, for example, if I wanted a ground level shot in Kong versus Godzilla, potentially end up with something like this, albeit probably without garbled text at the bottom. Um, you know, the important part here is that this clip runs about eight seconds. With a world model, you know, it would just continue on until I prompted it for something else. That said, this is actually what the Pixverse R1 model looks like right now. Uh, that said, don't let this dissuade you. There are some tricks to maintaining uh, much more cinematic realism, and it is actually a lot of fun and capable of producing some stuff that, I mean, will really surprise you. And just some quick tech notes before we jump in. The model is capable of generating at 1080, and it's built around their Omni native multimodal foundation model, uh, which, you know, unifies diverse modalities of text, image, video, and audio. Although that said, the version that we're using today only accepts text. It is capable of infinite streaming via this autoregressive mechanism. Uh, two notes on that. In the beta version, you only get five minutes, which is actually still a pretty long time. Uh, and then when it comes to that autoregressive mechanism, well, that seems to be a trick that we're gonna talk about once we jump in, which is, well, now. So the real-time model does have a number of like kind of preset worlds that you can try out uh, and the ability to custom theme your own world. Uh, we'll definitely be digging into that. So giving a shot with this Snow Peak Vlog, and now we have real-time video being generated of this guy, you know, walking along a mountain path. Um, there is audio here, I do wanna note that, but it's mostly just music. Um, it's kind of repetitious and it gets, it kind of is a real pain to deal with with editing. So um, let's have something happen. Um, let's say, have an avalanche fall on top of the man. Why am I always mean like that? Um, let's fire this off. You'll note that it isn't necessarily extremely like Twitch real time, but uh, after a few seconds, we should have an avalanche fall. Wow, that's an avalanche falling on top. It's not really not an avalanche. It's kind of more like a giant snowball that falls on top of the guy. Um, so this is kind of the trick that I've, I think that I've uncovered in the model that maintains this cinematic realism. And something that we talked about with that autoregressive thing earlier uh, is that um, if we prompt something like um, the man starts dancing um, and just let that fire off and was that a dance? I don't know if that was the dance. I think that he just stumbled there. Um, I think that what ends up happening, okay, so there's our dance. So after a little bit of latency, he starts dancing. Uh, but then he resumes kind of his walk cycle again. Now, that's not to say that you can't go off script, as we'll see later on. I mean, you really can go off script. So there's basically three modes here, POV, ambient, and dramatic. Now, I think that POV was probably what our, our snow climber was in. Ambient, I think, is pretty well showcased in this Can You Wake Him Up preset. Um, you know, we have streaming video, uh, streaming real-time video, I keep saying streaming, uh, real-time generated video of this guy sleeping on a couch, which doesn't make me wonder, what did he say to end up on the couch? Uh, anyhow, um, if we prompt, like, let's keep, make it very easy, a cat jumps on top of the man and then runs away, um, we should indeed get that. So, um, 
Uh, there he is. That's a big cat. Um, it's a good looking cat and then runs away. And then, yeah, now we're back to, uh, you know, our streaming real time video of this guy sleeping. Now where things kind of get fun and pretty hilarious is when you turn it on the dramatic mode, because that is when things start to get a bit unhinged. So taking our man in a blue business suit, walking down a busy city street, we immediately start getting dramatic. He meets this woman. Uh, she's got some kind of manila folder that she's handing him. I don't know what's going on with the background um, there. Uh, but, uh, you know, he seems kind of invested in it, except in the meantime, I had prompted that he went to go buy a hot dog. Um, that manila folder just turns into a hot dog. They start eating the hot dog. It then cuts, of course, to uh, them buying the world's largest hot dog, by the way. I don't know how much he's paying for that, but it is definitely worth it. Um, and then it, it just starts like generating up a tornado scene for some reason. I guess that's, you know, the dramatic element of it. Um, so now we're running around uh, trying to eat our hot dog as a tornado is coming on, uh, except the model now forgot that there's a tornado. Uh, and now they're walking to some car and we're changing characters. Later on in the generation, uh, some masked hitmen show up out of nowhere. A tornado finally does show up. I did prompt for Godzilla to appear as well, which he does. Uh, and then unprompted, our man in the blue business suit hops on a motorcycle and is like, I'm out of here, which is actually pretty wise in all honesty. Uh, and that's what there are moments in this that uh, actually work as shots. Yes, there is uh, some, like, where did the motorcycle go? Like, things disappear, um, but then reappear as well. Like, the yeah, there's the, the motorcycle is now back. Um, so, yeah, it's just really fascinating. Again, hilarious. Now, I know we're in this mode of everything must be cinematic and perfect, but, uh, you know, there's still, like, a profound joy in generating up uh, a video of a guy drinking coffee next to a fireplace with a giant steam steaming cup of coffee, having a bear show up in that shot, and then you know, maybe taking a nap afterwards. The guy's completely unfazed by this. Then having the cabin set on fire as the entire thing falls apart. Apparently we discover that our guy is definitely wearing a flame retardant shirt. Having the bear then take our guy over to the bear cave. Only interestingly in this section, uh, our guy would not enter the cave. I mean, it's probably a pretty smart move on his part, but uh, despite being prompted, go in the cave. Uh, he was like, you know what? No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna walk somewhere else. Else. Having them then discover a castle and go inside, find another fireplace, decide to take a nap only to get challenged by a knight, and then unfortunately run out of time before I can have the bears attack the knight. So yeah, it's goofy, it's weird, it's morphy, it doesn't always listen to directions, and I absolutely love it. It actually reminds me a lot of, well, early AI video. It reminds me a lot of Avalanche by Zash Manson, uh, one of the earlier AI video generations. Uh, I mean, this, I, I, as longtime viewers know, I, I break this video out whenever I can because it is so hilarious and so awesome, completely belongs in a museum, Every time I watch this video, I find something new to laugh at. Um, yeah, this is perhaps the greatest AI video ever made to this day. But it is important to remember that videos like Avalanche or like Will Smith eating spaghetti, that was like two, two and a half years ago. Uh, and well, this is where we are now. So this is Pixverse R1, which does lead to the question, like in two or three years, what does R3 or R4 look like? And more importantly, what is everyone else working on right now? In the meantime, if you want to try out Pixverse R1, and I actually kind of recommend that you do, it's actually sort of a lot of fun. Um, you, I guess the best way is to hit them up on their Twitter account right now. Uh, that said, uh, you know, I'll be keeping an eye on this when it does fully release. I will definitely let you know. Moving on, Black Forest Labs have released Flux to Klein. This is the, well, Klein being small in German. Uh, this is, of course, like, you know, the smaller Flux 2 model. It's coming in in four different flavors as Flux releases often do. Uh, the 4B base model, the 4B, the 9B base model, and the 9B version. Uh, with VRAM requirements as low as 8.5, four gigs uh, and then going up to 21.7. So not too bad. I did get a bit of a laugh uh, with the inference times in that the tilde signs here, uh, which means approximately, actually initially read to me as minus signs. Um, so yeah, it's fast. It's so fast it actually travels back in time and generates before you even prompt. I don't want to take anything away from that. It is fast. Actually, they say that it is 30% uh, faster than any competing model. Look, I know that Flux 2 has been a little bit on the back foot since the release of Nano Banana Pro, but again, the important thing to remember here is that this is open source and you can run it on your machine. Testing it out as a straight image generator, and to be honest, I really wasn't expecting much here, but um, yeah, I mean, it, it did a pretty decent job. I'm trying this out over on Fall. This is one of our like Twin Peaks inspired, uh, you know, detective in a Pacific Northwest 
diner prompts. Yeah, I'm a pretty solid job. Another kind of like Lynch, uh, Gregory Cruden inspired uh, shot here. Um, overall, I mean, not bad. Um, eyeballs are looking a little bit on the weird side there. Um, yeah, she's got a little like pop in the eyeballs there. Uh, but you know, in terms of like composition, things that I asked for in the prompt, I mean, everything is, you know, pretty much on point here. Um, just know that if you're working with the client model, you're probably gonna need to do some fixes. Natively, it does not generate text very well. Uh, here's a mime in a grocery store, uh, pretty garbled text. Again, I did not expect it to really nail this. And as we've seen kind of recently with Flux 2, uh, whenever you lean into anything that's sort of on the like fantastical side, which I mean, this really isn't too bad. It's just a pirate ship deck, uh, it, it, but it does tend to kind of like port itself over into kind of like this illustrated look. Even something like a cinematic screenshot from a dark 80s fantasy movie ends up resulting in this, which does not look like a screen grab. It does look very like painterly, but is also super cool. In fact, Flux 2 might have just become my go-to for book covers for my 20 volume fantasy series that I am never gonna write. Rounding out on image test, the most basic prompt in the world, toast. Uh, kind of nailed it. Also, I'm on this thing where I'm like not eating carbs right now, so uh, that looks doubly delicious to me. As an image editor, it's looking pretty good. Friend of the channel, Brent Lynch, took uh, this uh, you know, comic book animated character and uh, gave it the prompt to turn it into essentially a real person. And the result, I got to admit, came out pretty good. In fact, it actually ends up looking better, in my opinion at least, than Flux 2 Max, which kind of has that, um, you know, eyes too far apart kind of thing going on. Little uh, battle angel going on there. Another friend of the channel, McMuffins, gives us a comparison between the Flux 2.0 dev version and the Klein 4B, uh, four steps versus 20 steps. And you know, look, obviously, you know, Flux 2 dev is going to look a little more appealing, but it is important to know that Klein can run on consumer hardware that is within the grasp of affordability. And even if you don't run things locally, I'm sure it will be available on like most of the platforms. Uh, it already is up on Fall and Replicate and actually even over at Black Forest Labs itself, they have a playground where it's like totally free because this thing's gonna be dirt cheap to use. Moving on with some quick hits. Runway have released a, a new feature called Story Panels. What's well, an app really uh, on the Runway platform. What this feature allows you to do is to take any image. In this case, we're just gonna take the FBI agent from uh, our Flux to Klein output, I mean, why not? Uh, and then describe a story. So in this case, we're gonna go with a detective in a surreal Pacific Northwest town investigates a murder with supernatural overtones. He's approached by a young waitress who claims to have a clue for him. We hit generate and we end up with three cinematic stacks is what they're calling them, uh, generated from that image. Uh, so yeah, it's an interesting approach here. Now, does this seem a lot like the technique that we showcased in yesterday's video? Um, well, yes, it does, because essentially it is kind of the same thing. Um, you know, they're both using Nano Banana Pro here in order to accomplish this. But I gotta say, going with this vertical three up approach is, I mean, it's, it's actually kind of smart if you're not going with the ultra wide 21.9 thing that we were doing in the last video. The only thing that's kind of a bummer is that you still have to go through and manually crop and extract each one of these frames out. I do wish that someone would build a tool that could do that, that doesn't cost credits. But I will say that three up output does open up some interesting creative opportunities uh, as showcased here by, well, friend of the channel, a lot of friends in this video, uh, Heather Cooper, who just, you know, ran the uh, stack as one output and uh, ended up with, you know, essentially like three scenes. So like three video generations for the price of one. That's not too bad. And listen, I know we're all still waiting for image to video in version 4.5. I have not heard anything as of yet. Uh, the minute that it drops, I will do a full comprehensive review on 4.5. I, I just really haven't gotten a chance to. They've added a bunch of other stuff too that I really do want to get into, uh, but I've been kind of holding off until we get image to video. Moving on to some Google VO news. Nothing exciting like VO4 or anything like that, but they have made some improvements to VO3.1. Uh, for one, uh, well, improvements overall to the ingredients to video feature. We now have native vertical outputs for ingredients to video as well. And uh, I guess new upscaling for 1080 and 4K. The ingredients to vertical video thing, I think for a section of the audience is a, a pretty big deal, especially if you're, you know, obviously if you're dealing with shorts or reels or anything of the sort. Uh, ingredients I do like, um, um, you know, such as the example here of combining like three kind of uh, abstract images and kind of blending them together. I do think it works very well. For me in 16.9, it's been
been a little hit or miss lately. Um, this is a scene from, well, this is uh, Tom, Planet Hell fans. You will recognize him and a new character named Sonny. Um, so obviously in this output, we, we ended up with Tom here, but in the other outputs, um, kind of like Tom adjacent characters. Um, yeah, kind of odd. Are you still planning to escape? Midnight, dropship coming in. Does that mean a Planet Hell sequel might be on its way? Just might be. Interestingly, in 916, I didn't get Tom in any of the outputs. So yeah, um, ingredients might not be the way to go if you're working narratively. That said, I did want to mention, I do still really like the Flow platform, uh, particularly that uh, you can still use VO3.1, uh, the fast mode, low, lower priority. So kind of the slow boat on it for uh, free, well, zero credits. You're actually still paying like 200 bucks for uh, the whole AI platform. And uh, you do get like free Nano Banana here as well. Well, closing out with an open source project called Wonder Zoom that, well, I mean, it pretty much does what it advertises. This is kind of cool. Uh, you can zoom in on an image. Uh, that bird, by the way, is prompted in. So yeah, you can add things into the environment and man, you can, I mean, you can really, really zoom yourself in. Uh, I think it is kind of like, there's a Gaussian element to it as well, which is why we're able to kind of get that parallaxing effect as well. Um, and then as we zoom out, we can obviously move into other areas uh, of the image as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. There's something about this that I find really, really kind of fascinating and cool. It actually reminds me a lot of this older AI video piece done by Chikai Ohozama um, that was generated initially in Mid Journey and then upscaled in Magnific, like really early Magnific, uh, and then animated in Runway. Yeah, I always thought this was a really, really neat and interesting piece. This is a quick FYI. The code actually is not available just quite yet. It's currently being organized and will be released soon. So that's it for today. In the meantime, I've got a newsletter that I got to start writing. Uh, if you haven't signed up for the newsletter yet, by the way, uh, link is down below. Would appreciate it if you did. As always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.